June 14th, 2015. An unfunny man at the Nintendo World Championships was about to announce the next game contestants would compete in, but instead ominously spoke about an unannounced multiplayer game as if he was about to announce Half-Life 3. All this building up to announce a 3DS game that looked like it was designed by mentally ill fish. Contestants would split up into two teams and battle it out with mechs that shoot lasers at a giant ball. That game was known as Blast Ball, and since it had just been announced, players would have to adapt and figure out the game as they go along, all the while still trying to win. The commentary of the championships kept explaining the game as the people were playing and as they kept going on and on about how your power runs out if you shoot too much and your opponent's goal shrinks the more you score on it and you can charge your shot to push the ball more everyone kind of slowly realized that this new game the contestants were playing was dumb as shit there was just no outstanding themes or aesthetics it seemed like the players didn't really have conscious control over the ball it's just fucking Rocket League. There was just nothing special about it, and frankly, nobody cared. At the end of the match, the hosts kept complimenting the game's design and mechanics as if it wasn't made by the company they work for. Everything they had to say was so forced and dumb. Well, two days later at Nintendo's E3 press conference, it was revealed that the piece of shit we watched people play at the World Championships was actually a piece of shit Metroid game. The first piece of shit Metroid game since the critically unacclaimed Metroid Other M in 2010. Wow, how exciting. While it would be over a year from Federation Force's announcement and release, a month before the game came out, Metroid Prime Blast Ball was released for free in the 3DS eShop. Yes, the very game featured at the Nintendo World Championships, also acting as a demo for Federation Force. This game is similar in spirit to Metroid Prime Hunter's first hunt, in the vein that it's a baby content showcase released before the full game. The difference here being that 95% of the content featured here is identical to some of the content featured in the final game. But still, instead of calling it the Federation Force demo, they called it Blast Ball. They had so much confidence in this shitty little mode that they had to separate it from the campaign in Federation Force and even release it as its own game. The idea that someone thought this would become in any way popular in the online multiplayer scene is something that should be studied. First Hunt was all original content, even though the game was just a demo, and the multiplayer mode in that game wasn't that bad. Well, without wasting any time, why not check out the crowned pile of shit demo for one of the most infamous cases of Nintendo not caring. Your first time booting in, you get greeted by some stupid idiot who immediately dumps you into a practice arena. The idea of a shooter on 3DS is a pretty cool idea. Games like Resident Evil Revelations was proof that it worked, and Ironfall Invasion showed that you could build a shooter game from the ground up for 3DS and not destroy the industry's faith in humanity. The first confusing brain fuck of your journey is starting the game outside your mech. You're supposed to press the A button next to the mech to get in, but you could actually just run around the arena like a moron with this garbage walk cycle. The controls for walking are the most bizarre things I've ever experienced. First of all, movement is somewhere between tank controls and driving a car. Just by watching me move him around, you can tell that the controls are horrific. You can only move forward and backward, and then move the camera left to right, all with just the circle pad. Wouldn't it have made more sense to just have 360 movement and have the camera fix itself to whatever direction you're facing? It's almost like that was made standard 30 years ago. When you hop into the mech, you're introduced to the basic controls. One of the most common aesthetics in these mech suit style first person shooters is this border around the screen, just to remind you that, hey, you're in a giant fucking robot, don't forget it. And while I usually have no problem with it, I can't help but be annoyed by it when the screen I'm looking at has the resolution of a carpet. It's really not the worst thing in the world, but add on these hologram UI bars and spacey colors that blend in with each other on a 240p screen, and you've got yourself a confusing seizure-inducing nightmare scape in which you can't always understand what's going on. The general controls are okay. They use the same controls from the main Metroid Prime series, where all the movement and camera control is done with one joystick. In the original Metroid Prime, that control method worked because you were never constantly required to manipulate your view to do things. In both games, the left trigger locks on and the right trigger enables the free camera. The tutorial here treats you like a fucking retard and it's completely mandatory which is great, I really love it. You begin a test match against an opponent and even with just two people playing, it's pretty clear that the design just doesn't click. The ball reacts very little to your shots and the other player is more annoying than they are a challenge. Sometimes you feel like you're actually in control and it's those moments which feel fun, but whether or not you have control over the ball comes down to everyone else's competence. The D-pad lets you say lines to your team, and they all just sound like the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. Hello. 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 Why would I need to say hello during a game? Hello to who? Who cares? And I love the deadpan emotionless voice, as if they grabbed the most suicidal employee at next level games and told them to record placeholders for the game, but they forgot to replace them. Respawning is the most disorienting shit on the planet. 
you die and you have to watch yourself explode and like 45 minutes later you respawn. And instead of your view just sliding into your mech, you have to go through this dumb animation that confuses the hell out of you. If you die in the game, you might as well throw acid in your eyes, take 30 shots, and then turn your 3DS upside down. You'll be just as aware of where you are. At the end of the game, you can revel knowing that you've accomplished nothing. Good game. Good game. Welcome to the main menu. This is where you can question your decisions. A few things are locked, so let's check out what we can access from the start. In customize, we can customize. Wow, who the fuck cares? There's jack shit to choose from and a lot to unlock. You can get some skins from select amiibos, but really, this doesn't matter. There's nothing wrong with skins to customize your character, but I just can't help but not give a shit. The resolution is so horrid that you'd never be able to guess in the heat of whatever the fuck this is what the skin your opponent's wearing is. Still, I have no problem with this, but it's just funny. You can customize your mech differently per team, which is pretty cool. You can see the messages assigned to your D-pad, and realistically, none of these are gonna make any difference in the heat of a match. I mean, you gotta be a real douchebag to think saying defense is gonna get anyone on your team to actually play defense. No, nobody's gonna care. The real move is just picking out the dumbest sounding lines and spamming them during matches. On top of changing the language, you can choose between a depressed man and a soulless woman for your choice of voice. It's a real blast because you can even change the pitch of their voice like it's Tomodachi life. Who would actually need to do this? It's not even that these settings are stupid, it's just that the amount of people playing this game could probably fit in a Burger King. And how many of them do you think are customizing their Blast Ball experience to their liking? Getting into Blast Ball, you can play alone or with others. Of course, since the Nintendo Network servers went down, the online community for this game is now more dead than it was when this game launched. You can play locally, and of course, you can play by yourself with bots. There's two different types of Blast Ball, Versus and Challenge. Versus is like the free mode, and Challenge is the cup-like tournament. The customization in this game is a joke. There is none. Literally none. No difficulty, no player count, no items, no nothing. You can choose your team and that's it. To win a match, your team has to score three goals, and before every match, there's this practice lobby, which is always a waste of time. Getting into the game, it's immediately difficult to figure out how you should be playing. You shoot the ball, and it just comes towards you. Everyone's jumping around, and you have no clue who's in control of the ball. Charge shots are always the best way to push the ball, but every time you try to shoot it, someone pushes it out of the way. In the training, you're taught that you can hold R while locked on to aim your cursor ahead of the moving object. But in this case, the moving object always moves too fast and the reticle doesn't reach far enough to shoot it. It's a joke. The next biggest annoyance in this game are the stupid fuck-ass opponents. Everyone has health, so if you get shot enough or you shoot someone enough, they'll drop dead. If you shoot a few blasts at someone on the other team, they'll turn around and get all pissed and start shooting at you. None of the computer players will ever shoot you unless you shoot them first. So sometimes you'll just be shooting at the ball and some dumbass will be in the way. So you shoot at them and then they just turn around and rail you. Every time you score, the opposing team's goal shrinks, which is a cool idea. That way, no matter how good or bad you are at the game, scoring becomes more challenging as you get closer to winning. The issue is, when it comes down to the final point, the goal becomes so small that it's just a nightmare to score on. One person could stand in front of it, and they would literally be blocking the entire goal. The ball hurts you when you touch it, so if you knock it into them enough, you could then get the ball past them. But even then, their corpse stays on the floor for a bit, so you have to wait for their corpse to disappear so it no longer blocks the goal. You have a limited amount of spamming you can do before you need to cool down. This is the absolute biggest pain in the fucking ass when you finally get up close to the ball and just spam the shit out of the A button, trying to get the ball to just move forward any amount, and then the cooldown starts and the ball goes past you and you feel like you've done absolutely nothing. One of the most unsatisfying designs of this game is the movement speed. You walk at the speed of a Wii U updating, and that's your one and only speed. No faster than this. If the ball is on the other side of the map, chances are a goal will be scored before you make it there. There's no run, no boost, or anything. Every so often, the ball will get shot up into the air and there's no explanation as to why. You would assume that shooting at the bottom of the ball that's touching the ground would shoot it up, but it doesn't. And even charge shots won't do it. It just seems like randomly, if everyone's shooting at it, it might just be enough to lift it into the air. And then all of a sudden, the laws of physics change and you can keep the ball in the air as long as you shoot at it, which makes no fucking sense. The ball barely moves when you shoot at it, but you can just make it fly in the air if you keep hitting the bottom? Why? There never seems to be any rhyme or reason. Just when you think you can predict where the ball is gonna go, it explodes and flies to the other side of the map, and you never have control over it. I don't know what game these jerk-offs were talking about, but it definitely wasn't this one. If time runs out and you're tied, the goals open back up to normal, and you get one minute to score a goal. If neither team scores, then no one wins, and you've successfully wasted six minutes. And even if you tie, your ranking goes down. It's a joke.
Now, it may seem like there's very little that comes into play during matches, and that's because there is. But there is actually one more thing that plays a major role in the matches, and that's items. But before I get into that, let me just say, I played two matches of Versus, and both sucked. The computers are just way too hard, and mixed with the no control you have over the ball, it really makes for something you never want to play again. Also, doing certain things in matches unlocks different skins. Not that you would care. Back on the main menu, we also have the practice option that lets you re-waste 7 minutes of your time by replaying the tutorial. Training is now unlocked. What a shame. The training mode here is literally the exact same tutorial from Federation Force. Everything is the exact same. I won't say much about it since it's not all that unique, but I will say, this is a fucking awful tutorial. They spend like five whole minutes teaching you that the circle pad aims and A is shoot. They treat you like you're a brain-dead idiot, which you might be, but still, it's so unnecessary to linger on the most basic of controls. All around, this is a great way to turn someone off to your game. Poorly paced, boring minute-long sequences, a three-minute-long enemy spam portion. I mean, this thing really just sucks, but sadly, it encapsulates the energy of the final game perfectly. Not the worst thing in the world, but I'd definitely rather kill myself. At the end of it all, you get a really lame and unanimated award ceremony. And this is where you really get a great look at how terrible the art direction for this game is. What if we took the most uninspired colors and themes humanly possible and made them all chibi and faceless? Congratulations, you now have God's gift to fucking no one. They really couldn't have gone in a worse direction for this. As much as the Metroid community hates Other M for what it did to Samus and the Metroid lore, at least that game looked badass. This game looks like it was designed by a Dollar General employee. Well, with that trash out of the way, it's time to see the real meat and potatoes of this game. Blast Ball Challenge. Think of Challenge as the tournament mode of this game. The Grand Prix. The six consecutive kicks to the dick. This is where whatever skill you can muster together comes to either be ignored or slightly considered. In Blast Ball Challenge, you have to beat six Blast Ball games without losing once each round being more difficult than the last. This game mode makes me want to throw myself under a truck. Imagine the bullshit of versus mode, but you have to win six times in a row. I can't even begin to describe the hell that this mode is, so buckle in. Match one is laughably easy. The bots will sometimes literally not move for a few seconds. It's insane to me how the difference in challenge here is so clear compared to the matches I played in versus mode, yet there's no way for me to customize the difficulty of each match. Just when you think you're having fun, you're reminded how little control you have over the ball and how genuinely unfair everything that happens is. Usually this first match here won't last long, but you can never predict when the bots just want to be stubborn and not let you win. Sometimes you just gotta hold the higher score until time runs out. The second match is pretty similar. The only difference here is it's kind of fun. It has its share of bullshit, but the difficulty level feels extremely fair and just flat out works. This is what seems to be the most fair match in the entire game and the only one I would say is genuinely fun and engaging. And that's not saying much, but it definitely makes you feel something. This is like the line of coke in the pile of needles. It doesn't last forever though. Once it's over, welcome to the shit. Level 3. This is where the poor game design looks at the lens and smiles. From here going forward, nothing feels fair and winning feels like mostly luck. Why is that? Well, let me show you the biggest fucking migraines this game has to offer. Let me formally introduce items. Items fly out of the ball when you shoot it enough. How many times do you have to shoot it? How does what item pops out get decided? No idea. Not even the manual has a clue. There's four items. Shield, Adrenaline, Eject, and Mystery. With these four items, you can sway the odds from 50-50 to 54-46. These items have to be the dumbest fucking element of these matches. First of all, when you shoot the ball enough and whatever imaginary number the devs came up with gets reached, one of four items pops out and it just flies in a random direction, often to the other side of the map. Hmm, an item that lands in a random spot on either side of the map that needs to be touched by players all walking at the same speed with no control over whether or not they're closest to it? Someone with half a fucking brain could tell you that that is what we in the logic world call luck. If an item doesn't touch the ground, then there's a fantastic chance that it landed on one of your opponents and someone you hate just got a great power-up. This is something that constantly happens. It feels like you always see power-ups land on an opponent, but in my five hours I spent with this game, not once did a power-up ever land on me. If the item does land on the floor, the next absolute nightmare to deal with is trying to see where the fuck it landed. While playing Blast Ball, you will almost always be holding down the L button. This is because it locks your view to the ball, and since there's no second stick to control your camera, you will have no goddamn clue where you're supposed to look at without it. So if you want to look around for the item that fell, you have to slowly tilt yourself around and make out the item among the low-resolution walls, all the while the ball is still flying around. If you manage to see it, which is a lot easier 
easier said than done. You can then slowly walk up to it and touch it. The issue with that, of course, being that by the time you even think to take your finger off the L button, some bot has already grabbed it because they know exactly where it is and how to get to it. And sometimes they'll just walk into it accidentally. It's the dumbest thing. If you actually get an item, what are you treated to? The shield is what the name suggests. A shield. By pressing Y, you can activate your item, in this case being the shield. It protects the player from damage, and it even damages opponents you touch. Damaging other players sounds like a cool addition to not taking damage, but sometimes the computers will just go out of their way to fucking walk directly into you, and it's the most annoying thing on the planet. It always feels like you're never the one to deal the damage, but a computer will always be the first one to rail you against your own goal, adrenaline. If you pick this one up, you can move around much faster for about 10 seconds. This is one of those items where it either leads to an epic goal or completely fucks everything up and ruins the game. I've had times where well-timed adrenaline usage has led to dope-ass deeks and major goals, but I've had just as many complete and utter catastrophes play out in horrendous ways. In my experience, there's a 40% chance you'll make an epic goal, a 50% chance you'll fuck up and ruin the game for your team, and a 10% chance literally nothing happens. For the most part, this item's just some really great potential gun down the shitter. My absolute favorite part about this item is that often what happens is you'll get it, but you just won't be in a position to shoot the ball. So you end up just spamming the shoot button but one of your dumb fucking idiot teammates will be standing in the way and just won't move and it completely wastes your opportunity. The bots just don't know when they need to fuck off and will just gladly stand there as you blast fat loads on their back. They have the IQ of a bagel. The last unique item is Eject. This is the absolute, without a doubt, biggest fucking nightmare of this game. It is the worst thing I've ever seen in any team-based shooter. By picking up this item, you start a 5 second countdown, at the end of which all your opponents get ejected from their mechs and have to climb back into them. So, to summarize, by getting this item that may or may not randomly fall on an opponent outside of your control, you can completely remove the entire other team from playing for an absolute bare minimum of 10 entire seconds. 10 seconds where this tiny arena is completely unburdened by an opposing team. Who in God's name came up with this shit? How on planet Earth was this deemed fair enough to be put into this game? Imagine a game of hockey, but there's just 10 seconds of open ice. Or basketball, but for 10 seconds, there's only one team on the court. What the fuck kind of thing is that? This is also the only point in the game where you can leave your mech and move outside of it. In my experience, it feels like the other team are always the ones to get this item. When you see that warning pop up, you just know you're not going to be able to shoot the ball again for another 15 seconds. No obstacle is better than one that makes it so you can't play the game. What if in Mario Kart there was just an item that makes you sit in place for half a minute? The game is so shit, the devs design a power-up that lets you stop playing. Sometimes you get disoriented and try to hop into the wrong mech, but it really never matters because no matter what, by the time you get back in and get through the dumb animations, the other team will probably have scored. It's just one of those things that makes you want to blow your brains out. When you see one lying on the floor, you just want to kill yourself because you know you're not going to get to it before someone else does. The last item is the mystery item. You pick it up and you get one of three items I just talked about. This one's pretty rare and it doesn't even get mentioned in the manual. And who cares anyway? No matter what you get, you'll still feel like a stupid cocksucker, which you most certainly are. Every so often, for no reason whatsoever, the ball used for a match will change. It's the weirdest thing and there's no explanation for it. You'll just play like 9 matches straight and then suddenly get a lava ball. Besides the normal ball, there's a lava ball and a bouncy ball. The lava ball just does extra damage. If you get hit by it hard enough, you instantly die, which is great. Other than that, it really doesn't have anything else going on. The bouncy ball is exactly what you think. It's extra bouncy and it's easier to get up in the air. Once again, there's no rhyme or reason of which ball you get. This is the only gimmick of this entire game. And while on the topic of gimmicks, this game could have used a few. Easily the most overlooked fuck up of this entire game is the fact that there's only one map. It's the same one over and over and over again and there's nothing special about it. You know what makes fictional sports games fun? The insane shit that couldn't happen in real life. The best thing I can compare it to is the absolute masterpiece that is Mario Strikers Charged, also developed by Next Level Games. Every level has some new crazy thing that happens. In one level, there's meteor showers, the next there's rain and mud everywhere, one has a tornado throwing cows across the field, all the while a huge variety of items is constantly keeping the game interesting. Then you look at this game with one boring map, three unpredictable items, and zero flavor, and you wonder how many people at Next Level Games were killed between the making of this game and Luigi's Mansion 2. It's just a complete shame, and the last of love and passion really shines. It's everything a game shouldn't be. It's just flat out not fun. By the time you make it to level 6, you're really ready to stab yourself. Nothing about this is fun anymore. It takes almost no skill to make it here, just a bunch of luck. You can master this game after 3 rounds. The best way to move around is by pivoting, by jumping while sidestepping. Always do your best to prevent opponents from getting items. If the difficulty is too ridiculous, just guard your goal once you're beating them and try to hold out for 4 minutes. Nothing about it is particularly fun, which I'm honestly surprised about. 
I wasn't expecting this game to be very good, but I did think it would be somewhat fun. Usually a bad game can get so bad that it loops around and becomes fun again. This game is just trying to be good so bad, but can't get a single piece of game design right. It's flawed just enough to where every element that's supposed to be fun is just annoying, and it's very sad. After two hours, I managed to beat level six, and with that, unlock the credits. It's just all so depressing. Usually I can walk out of a game like this and say I had some kind of fun, but in this case, I just didn't. This whole thing just sucked ass. Every single aspect of it is flawed, poorly designed, and most notably, completely soulless. A game filled with poor design, lack of skill-based gameplay, bland and uninspired graphics, dumb animations, annoying items, cunty AI, zero faces, bad tutorials, a dumb, unfitting chibi art style, no respect for the franchise it derives from, and a lack of anything remotely creative all intended to be a fun game. The idea of this game in itself is just absurd. You play as a soldier of the Galactic Federation, which is hosting a giant soccer game in space for no reason. Remember when Samus would walk through ships littered with the corpses of dead Federation soldiers? How the fuck did we get to this? Ultimately, this isn't just not for everyone, it's for no one. In the past, I've talked about bad games like Hotel Mario and Teleroboxer, but those games I can honestly recommend as having some amount of fun to them. This game is just an unmistakable pile of shit. As confusing and unpredictable as this game can be playing with bots, playing with real people isn't any better. Instead of bots doing things you don't know how to react to, real people are doing things they have no clue why they're doing. With God as my witness, this game is terrible. Maybe one day I'll talk about Federation Force and how that turned out. But for now, stay away from this trash. And until Good then, game. I'm Bearman, and I've been wasting your time. Thanks for watching. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game.